This is I'm Sark and this is the last video of our Cold War series. We're looking at the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. So first of all we need to look at the Malta summit and its aftermath. So the Republican George Bush won the US presidential election in November 1988 and he ordered a review of US policy. This was because he did not believe that the Cold War was completely over and he needed to assure the American population that he was not unthinkingly continuing it. So this meant that arms control negotiations with the USSR continued in September 1989 at a time when Eastern Europe was beyond recognition as a communist system. And this meant that Gorbachev's negotiating power was significantly decreasing. When the two leaders met at Malta in 1989, moves were made between the two countries towards a closer economic relationship. So this meant the economic rivalry was ended and the Soviet Union were moving towards a market-driven economic system. So other informal agreements were also made. So Gorbachev stated that the Soviet Union would not use force to prevent Eastern European states from determining their own political future. And Bush agreed that the US would not intervene in Germany and the decisions would be left to the Germans. Bush also agreed not to intervene in the Baltic states, despite the fact that the USA never recognised the Soviet annexation of these countries. And Lithuania and Estonia were particularly interested in independence from the Soviet Union, as we'll find out later. Now, although no formal agreements were made, it did signal the end of the Cold War, and in November 1990, the Conventional Forces in Europe Treaty was signed. Now, the Conventional Forces in Europe Treaty established the limits of weaponry within Europe, and it ordered equal limits for members of NATO and the Warsaw Pact. It was agreed by Bush, Gorbachev and a number of other European states. So the final summit the leaders would hold together took place in July 1991, and this led to the conclusion of the START 1 and the implementation of the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. So the START negotiations had been commenced in 1982 under Ronald Reagan, and they were the largest and the most complex arms control treaty in history they would end up removing around 80% of nuclear weapons in existence. It was also agreed that nuclear technology would not be passed on to third party states. So next we need to look at the Baltics republics leaving the Soviet Union. As in 1988, a crisis developed in Azerbaijan as Armenians demanded separation from Azerbaijan and incorporation into Soviet Armenia. So Gorbachev was unwilling to support nationalist movements because it was undermined the USSR. So this meant that he sided with Azerbaijan. However, this didn't diffuse tensions and in 1989, 20 pro-independence marchers were killed in a protest for Georgian independence. Now this only heightened demands for independence. In the Baltic region, which comprised of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, the Soviets were very aware of how unpopular their rule was. So it is estimated that a half of a million people from the Baltics were deported to Soviet labour camps from 1944 to 1955 and the government were forced to introduce Russification in this area. However, Gorbachev's reforms meant that they started to talk about self-determination and in May 1989 the three states held a Baltic assembly in Tallinn, which was the capital of Estonia, and began talks promoting economic and political sovereignty of the USSR. So on the 23rd of August 1989, the three countries came together to form a chain, and this was called the Baltic Way. Now this was across the three republics in commemoration of the Molotov-Wiebentrop Pact, which had led to their annexation by the USSR before World War II. Now although Gorbachev was willing to allow Eastern European independence, the Baltic republics were a step too far. Even so, Lithuania stated their independence in February 1990, and Estonia and Latvia stated their independence in May 1990. So they used the illegality of their annexation as the reason. So this meant that at the start of 1991, the Soviets sent in troops to each of these countries. So the Estonians managed to avoid bloodshed, yet they did kill 12 people in Vilnius, which is the capital of Lithuania. But after communist hardliners launched a coup to overthrow Gorbachev, the Baltic states proclaimed their independence once more, and once the coup had failed, the European community welcomed the restoration of sovereignty among the Baltic states. The Soviet Union recognised their sovereignty on the 6th of September 1991. 
So finally, we need to look at the collapse of the Soviet Union. As it had been clear for a long time that Gorbachev's reforms were failing, so the economy was disastrous and he was coming under increasing pressure from reformers such as Boris Yeltsin and the communist old guard who wanted to thwart his reform agenda. So to balance his opponents, Gorbachev brought more hardline communists into government whilst also negotiating with the Baltic republics in order to keep the Soviet Union intact. So in July 1991, Gorbachev held talks with Yeltsin and President Nursultan Nazarbayev of Kazakhstan with plans of a new union treaty which would turn the Soviet Union into a looser federation with a reduced role for central government. Gorbachev also discussed the removal of hardline communists such as the KGB Keith, Vladimir Kuyakov and the Interior Minister Boris Pugo. However, Kuyakov had taped the conversation and he launched a coup on the 19th of August 1991. This aimed to replace Gorbachev and establish tighter controls on the USSR. However, the coup leaders made the mistake of not capturing Boris Yeltsin, so this meant that the coup failed within three days. So Gorbachev was brought back to Moscow where he presumed that he would take power once again. However, the power now lay with Boris Yeltsin and the Communist Party was soon dissolved. This meant that Gorbachev's power was now ebbing away. Now, over the months that followed, the other Soviet republics scrambled to pull free of central control. So on the 1st of December, Ukraine voted resoundingly in a nationwide referendum for independence. And then on the 8th of December, Yeltsin secretly met the leaders of Ukraine and Belarus, and they clinched a deal to bring the Soviet Union to an end and replaced it with the Commonwealth of Independent States. So on the 21st of December, 11 of the other 12 Soviet states signed up to a new agreement, which was the Alma-Ata Protocols. So Gorbachev called it an unconstitutional coup, yet he was forced to resign on the morning of the 25th of December 1991, and Yeltsin was the man who took power. So at midnight on the 31st of December 1991, the new Russian leaders of the Kremlin celebrated the transfer of power with a massive firework display on Red Square, and the next day, Russians woke up into a new country. So thank you for watching this, this was the last video in our Cold War series, so hopefully you've enjoyed this series and have learned a lot from it. So thank you and see you soon, bye.